What's going on? Doombots, Tony Skinjili here with Noper Dope for Kate Bishop. So, this is a pretty good one, right? Because we get to talk in detail about a character that might have some value outside of their initial kind of plans, but let's go into it. So, first we have Kate Bishop. She was made available on Sunday evening for American players uh, recently. This video is a little bit late. I never really see characters released on Sundays, so be it. Here's Kate Bishop. I did actually manage to unlock her very early with my wallet, and there's a lot of reasons for that. I'm just going to start off just taking a quick look at what she does. Now, she's a hero, global tech controller, young Avenger character. She is very clearly designed for war. That doesn't mean she's a war exclusive character, just like none of the other ones do, but you can look into the kit and get a little bit more. Being a global character kind of helps her fill in some slots for some of those unique dark dimension options. Being a tech character makes it a little bit easier to invest in her, considering right now the entire community uh, doing end game content is kind of waiting in the tech waiting room for a raid team. Uh, being a controller is kind of terrible because, you know, everyone good is a controller and most characters are controllers anyway. It's such a nebulous term. Controller could be anything, but we don't have to get into that. Let's get into her stats. And as always, instead of showing it off here, we're going to show it off on msf.gg. The website is the name. So, cool thing about msf.gg, as I always say, they give you pretty much what... Uh, planning as to where you can expect the stats to go on these characters, what they look like. As with most things, I don't see any value in evaluating a character at its absolute highest point, considering the fact that if you look at your own roster, you probably don't have that many maxed out characters, even if you are one of the top spenders in the game. So I like to pick a nice little middle ground. For me, that's 5-4. Generally speaking, if a character is at 5-4, you get a really good idea as to whether or not they are going to be able to accomplish any task or if they're kind of more of a niche character. We saw that a little bit with Echo, where between her stats and her kit at 5'4", she wasn't unreasonable, but you know how it goes. So this is a 105k version of this character. It's a 5 star, 4 red, 1 stage of ISOs on the character, blue ISOs on the character, gear tier 14. That is kind of where we're evaluating characters right now. Looking at Kate Bishop, we can get a look at her stats at this point. She's got a pretty weak health pool, but she's a human, she's a controller, that makes sense. Also remember that on her completed team, she gets like 75% bonus health, so fundamentally, you can basically double her health pool at any stage if you're using it on the war defense team and you'll get a better idea. So she's probably closer to 450 to 500k health at this investment with her full team than here. But we're just looking at her general stats on their own. 238 health, nothing to write home about. Damage, pretty low for a new character pool at 4 star, at 5 star, 4 red, gear tier 14. Usually you see them in that 20% range. Echoes is a little bit higher. Uh, armor, focus, resistance, all par for the course. Nothing really noticeable up there. Speed, a little bit lower than the average now. The average has been moving up as more and more fast characters have come up. So not the best speed. Definitely not bad. You know, anything as you get close to 100, 101, 102, those are the worst speeds in the game. Some of the fastest are in the high 120s to low 130s. 113 isn't the worst. She's pretty par for the course. Accuracy being 200% gives her the same buff or benefit that Daredevil has, which is even if she's blinded, her attack will hit. That's pretty much all to talk about as far as her base stats go. Let's take a quick look at her kit. And again, we'll just drop everything down to 6 to see where the value of these abilities are. We'll start at the bottom. On spawn, she gets offense up, all young Avengers. So that means the first attack is going to just do more damage that she takes. With tier 4s, it's 2 turns of offense up to her and all young Avengers. Huge boost. 
providing you're going to get the turns. If you're not going to get the turns or if they're not going to matter, like for war defense, it's very good. For using the character, you don't know how many turns she's going to end up getting, where you'd use her. So good tier four, not amazing. On death of a young Avenger ally or when a young Avenger ally drops below 50% health, attack a random enemy for 150% piercing. That goes up to 200 and apply blind and slow. This is kind of like what we've seen with Ghost Spider, Echo, a bunch of other characters, but this is only on death or 50% drop. And the other ones, it's just whenever they get hit. That said, this is a huge boost. Uh, not just the damage. The other ones are pretty much damage-oriented. This applying blind and slow is massive, depending on the character pool. When this character drops below 50% health, in addition... Into evade, so a little bit more survivability. None of this has to do with anything with war yet. Resistance and everything else for the team, giving them a little bit more value. Now on war defense, gain five charge on spawn of their initial match. That's a, a new term. We haven't seen that. Usually it's on spawn ever or on spawn if they are at full health. We see that with characters like Ultron, even... Heroes for Hire didn't really care about how they spawn, just the circumstance of what they looked like when they did. This is saying that the first fight for this team, she's going to gain five charges. This attack only occurs once per war. Obviously, there can only be one initial match. On turn, if charged, grant one ability energy to self and all young Avengers. Psychotic. That's crazy. So, really good passive for a team. The on-war defense... Uh, is a little bit better than like Deathpool, even though she's very similarities to that character. Not bad. Uh, not bad as a team ability. Individually, gives her a little bit of value outside of her team, but nothing crazy. Moving to her ultimate, it's a five energy, starts with two, which means not turn one, not turn two, but by turn three, she's about to attack all enemies for 250% piercing. If she has a charge, blah, 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 and then lose charge. It's a blind for two turns to the enemy and then two random negative effects from this pool. Super Hawkeye, kind of, except no real guarantee on multiple blinds. Hawkeye's ultimate and Taskmaster's ultimate can blind everybody, technically. This one only blinds the one person, but can kind of mess up everybody else. RNG is up to you. For war defense, feels good. For offense, it's really just a single target blind, kind of like Mordo's uh, stun on his special. On war defense, doesn't lose charge, gain 100% extra focus for this attack, so double. Uh, apply speed up to self and all young Avengers allies, this attack cannot be dodged or counterattacked. Great. Um, that's not specific to on war defense, that's just a feature of this ability. I know it's weirdly parsed, but... They like to have that line at the very bottom of everything, regardless of what other changes occur. So, empty the quiver, decent attack with the tier 4, two turns of speed up, and a little bit extra damage to all enemies. This attack is not happening often enough that that tiny little boost of damage and that two turns of speed up is going to make major differences. Although she is kind of feeding energy from her passive to herself and to the rest of the team. It's still not going to happen that often. I would probably say not the most important tier 4, but pretty reasonable. Trick Arrows is kind of her bread and butter. Attack primary adjacent targets for 225 goes up 50% to the adjacent targets. You know, that little triangle plus whoever happens to be in it. Flip three positive effects to negative effects. Huge, right? Used to be that dispelling, removing buffs was everything. Hawkeye did that to one character. Now we're flipping all hot, well, three positive effects on all the characters that get hit by it. Flipping is way stronger than removing 90% of the time. You know, there's a couple of corner cases where like you flip the buff and then it gets cleared or, or a character gets aim, aim assaulter, you know, can attack more, whatever. That's crazy talk. This is great. And it's a three energy attack, so you are going to be on, you know, spawning this. Like, you are going to fire this off on cooldown, more or less. But it does have that unique, like, you could choose the right target, you could save it for a turn. This is the one ability that gives her the 
little bit of a reach beyond just being a war defense character. If this character does not have charged, gain charged, this attack cannot be dodged. Not dodgeable, undodgeable attack, already huge. If this character has charged, apply offense up to self and all young Avengers allies, and then it goes to two turns. Again, since it's just affecting her outside of the team, not great on the team, and it, the fact that it's going to fire off on her first turn, probably among the best options. Really good ability, pretty decent tier 4 with the way the team works, but ultimately her kit kind of goes pretty well without tier 4s. Even this passive is not the best thing I've seen, but it can go either way. And then the basic attack primary target for damage, clear two positive random effects. Now, as we said, flipping positive effects is the best. Clearing random effects, pretty good too, especially on basic and especially that it works that way on the assist. On crit, chain to one and clear two positive effects. Very similar to kind of how uh, Nick Fury's basic works, where a crit makes something cooler happen, uh, or Carnage's basic, where if there's a negative effect, do something. Sometimes, some amount of the time, uh, she will hit another target and clear two random effects. Is that something to really plan around? Not really. She's kind of only going to be using this effect every third turn, really. First turn will be Trick Arrows. She'll have an energy. She'll give herself an attack. She'll move on. Not very likely that that's going to be incredibly important, but pretty good. If this character has charge, gain 25% crit chance for this attack. This attack cannot be uh, The tier 4 on this, kind of necessary for war defense. Uh, apply taunt to each target. That can be enough, right? Uh, now, that doesn't really change the assist counter. Oh, it does. Cool. <laughs> I'm wrong. Uh, on war defense, the, the assist slash counter here is a huge deal because it really doesn't matter if it's on critting or anything. It just happens. This is probably her best tier 4. Uh, for the war defense perspective, and that's pretty much it. So as far as her kit's concerned, she's got a pretty decent kit. Combine that with her middling stats, uh, you can kind of see a good utility character coming through with her. Now, let's go back to her in-game, and we can see that, all in all, She's a pretty above average controller character, right? Not very expensive. She takes tech gear, which right now, like I said, there's not many good tech gear characters. That said, there will be one day. She doesn't inherently add anything. She's not the solution to any problem, right? She's not what we've been missing in tech raids. Although she does have a really good opportunity of use, like Zemo does in the skill nodes of Doom. You wouldn't necessarily be confident that bringing Zemo up will help you walk through all of the nodes, but very specifically, you can get a lot of value out of him, maybe on one or two nodes. Uh, an ancillary, tertiary, you know, uh, an outside character that you can get additional value of from as you go. In Dark Dimension, that's kind of where things open up a little bit. She's not the best thing in Dark Dimension, but Dark Dimension itself, especially the global nodes of Dark Dimension, when you get into 4 and 5, the pool is a little tight, and there just isn't as many tech characters super viable in Dark Dimension, so that gear while it might have purposes for war and raids, doesn't really have any value in that pool. So if you're looking to be efficient and you want to put stuff into a global character, usually a fifth, as the Secret Avengers do a good enough job on the first three, and then Doctor Doom is an option. If you don't have Doctor Doom, you have Emma. Ghost is still technically option, but she does take tech gear. She's a little bit better than people give her credit for, but it just feels bad investing in her. Kate's kind of got that value. She's got that, well, I happen to have some tech gear and I need a fifth for, for whatever I'm doing or a fourth or some filler while I'm resting the rest of my characters up. If your resources go up, she's probably a decent option. 
And again, same thing with tech raids. I, you know, seeing some of the Doom tech raids, it's possible that maybe on the first or second node, probably the second node, you can get a little bit more utility out of her where you don't necessarily care if she lives or dies because the rest of your team, maybe your Lady Deathstrike or whoever you happen to be using on those nodes right now while we're waiting again for a new tech team to come out, uh, just to go in. Now, again, we're talking about overinvestment, right? We're talking about characters that quite literally must exist in the pool, and then you're going deeper into that pool to, to get more value out of it. No one wants that. No one wants to look at uh, eight characters to do something that five characters should be able to do. When you look at characters like the mystic nodes, you know, the, the three secret Avengers, or three new warriors plus Icarus and Cersei absolutely dominate. The web warriors absolutely dominate the bio. Previous to that, the symbiotes were very good in the bio nodes. They needed a lot more investment, but very good. Secret Avengers, similar, but there's not really one full team that can do everything unless you are overinvested. If you're in one of those situations we were talking about earlier, where you got your high stars, high red stars, gear tier, teal stuff on the character, you know, maxed everything. That's when you can start feeling a little bit more like you're punching down as opposed to solving the problem. Not inherently do I want to give her the rating I'm going to end up giving her on this. Uh, because, again, she is an ancillary character. She's somebody that you can use, but doesn't inherently give you much. Her character design is pretty good. The The abilities of the character are pretty good. She's not overtuned. She's not undertuned. She's not completely reliant on the success of her team. But in the same kind of vein of characters like Killmonger or... Nope, just Killmonger. You know, you, you, you get a good value out of the character. You get a lot of... of things that you might need and a lot of utility. So for the first time, she gets the first dope of the Noper Dope series. She is a well-designed character with a lot of good features. You can feel free to invest in her, whatever you have, you know, the comfortability zone to do, whether it be all the way up to teal gear or, you know, gear 12, 11, whatever it takes, whatever that means to you, I think she's a good and worthwhile investment. I could see you getting a little bit more out of her than you can some of the other characters that have come out in the last couple of months uh, outside of their direct purpose. And of course, if you are looking for that war defense team, it's not even a question, right? Like she's probably one of the most important members of the team in just how the team operates and what she does to it. She's probably the biggest threat on that team uh, to control, I mean, Echo's very reasonable on the defense. America Chavez is definitely a heavy hitter, but, you know, with the team placement, when you look at all of the abilities of those characters, which we'll do in another video, I'm sure, you can see that Kate really does bring that entire team together. You might be able to replace one character with CM temporarily, you know, just to get the max value out of it. But ultimately... Kate's a pretty good character. She's pretty dope, not going to lie. And you're probably not going to regret a decent investment. Again, disclaimer, tech gear, tech raid team, we know. I think you, she has some viability, but not complete viability. I don't think she's answering prayers. I think she's just a good character, and you'll find ways to use her if you invest in her. And that's pretty much it. As for ISO, you'll notice I haven't put it on here. Uh, I want to just take a moment on this one. She works, or the YA works, very similar to the Infinity Watch. Putting Striker on everybody and Skirmisher on Ms. Marvel will give you that illustrious triple tap, that extra damage that you keep kind of looking out for. So, hey, that's not bad. Individually, you could see a little bit more value on her as a raider. Just because she has a little bit of synergy with crit. But she doesn't do so much damage that she needs the crit. That said, her basic has a chance to chain on crit, which would then put, you know, a couple more vulnerables on people. Her special hits three people at minimum. Well, adjacent, so average of three people. Pretty decent. Her ultimate hits everybody. 
that's kind of where I like my raider characters to be. People who hit multiple times or multiple people, so you can get more of those vulnerable stacks. But since she is first and foremost a war defense character, I'm going to have to say I think Striker makes the most sense on her just because that's what makes the most sense on the team. Your mileage may vary. Comment if you think that you're going to get a little bit more out of her in another way, providing it's not four to five. That's pretty much all I have to say on Kate Bishop. Uh, if you've bought her or if you're excited about her, let me know why. I'm excited about her because she looks like a Xanax wine drunk mom. And that's what we need more of in Marvel Strike Force, just people. And uh, other than that, have a good night. Have a great day. I've been Tony Scongeli, and I will catch you later.